Welcome to Killer Creatures, where we dig in and dissect murderous monsters from some of our favorite films and rate them on our threat level meter. This is gonna be beautiful. You'll love this. I'm Mike Lanzini, and in this episode, we take a look at the creatures from one of my favorite 80s horror films, Night of the Creeps. Zombies, exploding heads, creepy crawlies, and a date for the formal. Nice tux. Night of the Creeps was written and directed by Fred Decker, who later wrote and directed the originally underrated but recently appreciated masterpiece, The Monster Squad. With Night of the Creeps, Decker taps into the spirit of the early Earth-invading sci-fi films of the 50s, while mixing a heavy dose and fun approach to the traditional zombies. Cindy! Brad's here! Now, Night of the Creeps won't be pigeonholed as a zombie film, or a slasher film, or even alien sci-fi film. It's all of those things. And they all exist in the world of two not so cool best friends, Chris and JC, who are nicknamed Spanky and Alfalfa by a bitter, salty detective with a dark past. Thrill me. That literally comes back from the dead to haunt him. Freeze! In Night of the Creeps, we are introduced to parasite leeches that may have been genetically altered or enhanced by space aliens. What the hell was that? To turn living beings into undead monsters. What is this, a homicide or a bad B movie? By feeding on their brains and then multiplying to feed on even more brains. Wait, <laughs> human brains? Now luckily back in the 50s, the assault on humanity was quickly put to rest by I assume the military leaping into action when maybe they saw their pod crash land on Earth. Now this of course wasn't done before the slugs claimed their first victim, Johnny, who was either about to get very lucky on Lover's Lane. So or was about to get very unlucky on Lover's Lane because he was going to get massacred by a psycho killer. Either way, flash forward nearly 30 years and the world is safe and sound, with Johnny frozen solid in a university medical building, and the parasite leeches are trapped inside him. Are you sure he's dead? Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure we could safely say he's not well, Chris. Now let's get down to it. How much of the zombie parasite problem could have been avoided, and how big of a threat does it actually pose to humanity? The problem here is that the slugs were not destroyed, but instead contained, and once they got free, all bets were off. After taking a long, hard look at the creatures from Night of the Creeps, I would rate them probably a 4 on our threat level meter. But let me clarify, I think that the parasite leeches that turn humans into zombies by feeding on their brains are a solid 3, 3.5. The zombies themselves may be a 1 or a 2. Because zombies by themselves are pretty manageable. They're deadly, sure, inconvenient, but definitely manageable. But the double whammy of a quick, small, and easily multiplying creature and zombies, that's not so easy to get under control once the spread begins. So what I believe Decker is giving us with Night of the Creeps is the beginning of the end of humanity. While the movie is pure fun and fantastical 80s horror, these creatures are actually quite sophisticated. Give me a fucking break. The end of this film suggests the beginning of the spread as we see the slugs venture off into the graveyard. And then when we see a spaceship fly by at the end, that may suggest the beginning of the actual alien invasion. Now here's my logic behind that. It's been 30 years, the, the slugs have been frozen inside Johnny's head, the aliens don't come back down to Earth. But once the slugs break free and start to wreak havoc on this small town, guess who shows back up? So I think all along the aliens had been waiting for these slugs to start to wreak havoc on humanity, incapacitate the humans with the creeps, and then invade and wipe out the remaining population. We are talking total science fiction here. So after reevaluating my initial evaluation, I think that I need to evaluate this one more time. Interesting suggestion. And now that I have, I'm calling this a threat level five. You're kidding, right? I know you might think I'm crazy, but when that alien ship flies by at the end of the film, that tells me that they're coming down to wipe out humanity. So, what do you guys think? Do you agree that the zombie parasite and alien combo deserves a level five on the threat meter? Or am I adding a little too much to this and getting a little carried away? That's exactly what I'm trying to figure out. Let's argue and debate this in the comment section below. Also, 
please be sure to like and share this video with your friends. Click that subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications so you can be alerted every time we post new videos. Let's blow this pop stand! We're going to get done, dudes! Yeah!